Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's another Tony and Ruff Plays. And this time uh, we are teaching or learning. I'm still learning the game. I've played a couple times with uh, with Mike here. We are playing the last hundred yards. So Ruff did not get to sleep with his rule book like he was planning. Um, so so he's 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 going on there. Now I will tell you that it is not a hard game by any means. It's just different. Once you figure it out, once you play a turn or two, you, you really understand it. So uh, it's it's one of those really cool different systems. Um, it's another tactical systems. And Ruff, how many more tactical systems do we need? Oh, just one more. Just one more, exactly. Yeah. So so the more we have, the better it is. I'm really hitting towards the tactical. And, I, and the more I play tactical, the more I enjoy it. Uh, and also the more I learn. So we are going to play... I just say I love the fact that some of them are so different, like this, and fighting formations is different to lock and load, and yeah, yep. I love it. And different. Um, what's the other one by Flying Pig? Why can't I think of it? Um, old school tacticals, different too. It's it's That's got cool. a different view to it too, and I really enjoy it. So, yep. um, but I think we might get a lot of people in here. Uh, we have Jeff. Have this series, but haven't cracked it open yet. Should be interesting. Yep. Join the club, um, Jeff. Yep. Well, Ruff, you cracked it open now, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So I've got yep. got it all. Hi, Dwayne. Dwayne's in there. We got Meander and Mike. So uh, say hi, guys. As you come in, we're already up to seven people watching. So I think a lot of people want to learn this game and want to play it. And I totally understand. Yeah, and after playing it a couple times with uh, a couple sessions with Mike, and this week was crazy. So we didn't. I, I don't even want to go through what I went through this week, but uh, it's yeah. it's all there. So. Groucho. We got Eric, we got Groucho. So come on in, say hi, and enjoy because uh, this is going to be fun. Now, they're what I'm going to do teaching me from scratch. I haven't had time to read the rule book, so they're teaching me. So uh, it, it'll, it'll be good, I think, for anybody that doesn't hasn't got a clue about the game. This isn't a playthrough. This is a teach teach yep. rough. Yeah, and we're playing. Just so you guys know, we're playing mission number one. Um, probably can't see that too well, but we're going to play mission number one. And one thing that I've noted that I know, and uh, is that as you play the scenarios, they add more to it. So Mike was telling me how great the mortars are in this game. So I can't wait to get to, to some mortars and stuff like that. So yeah, it'd be, yeah. Cool. be cool. We're, we're, we're so, pretty bare, bare bones on this one. Yeah. yeah. Mike, thanks for joining us and I appreciate you you helping out. I yeah. know you like to teach as well and get more people playing different games and the more people we have playing games, the better off it is, for sure. This, like man's, this man's brain, brain is something else. The amount of games in it and he designs them and develops them. This man is not from this planet. I just like hanging out with you guys. I have no idea why, but <laughs> cuz we're fun. We like to we like to take the mickey out of each other. That's it. Yep. Yeah, and we have no problem with that, and we do, we do that. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put the full screen and uh, not worry about our, our ugly mugs because that's not what's here. And it's one amazing. thing I will say I love about this game, the maps are gorgeous. They are absolutely beautiful. They're, they are, they? I yeah. think they're a good standard. Um, and, and not to knock my ATS or ASL so much, but those maps are so old and so the same. It's nice to see some some ab absolutely gorgeous artwork. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and I'm going to flip it over to my screen so that way we can uh, enjoy it. So if anybody's got any questions, put them up. I will try to get to them, um, and I'll try to remember them. I'll try to I'll try to make a note of them, and we can get them up and answer any questions that we need. So uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, Mike, do you want to just go through the? Um, uh, up the counter. I'll I'll highlight a counter so that way we yeah. can, we've got rough over here. We can kind of um, let's see if I can zoom in on a counter a little bit better than what I've got. So okay. Um, so you, which one are you going to go over? Uh, probably the squ uh, the squad underlying. So okay. we'll we'll go into the German section because okay. it's 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 pretty uh, close here. All right, rough. So let's take a mm -hmm. look at the first squad, second platoon. Up at the top left, you have a yellow minus two. Disregard that. That is for anti-vehicle um, warfare. So that's their number when they want to take on tanks and stuff. So don't, don't have to worry about that. The top right number is a one for first squad. 
Looking down below the, the yellow two, you have a blue two. That is your close assault number. So the higher the number, the better. Most of them are either one, two, or three. You have a few threes in the game. And those numbers are used when you go to melee hand-to-hand, -hand, okay? All right, All right, yep. So now we'll look at the bottom numbers. We talked about the one in the middle, but for everybody, um, the middle colored numbers have a, have a colored circle around them. This is the second um, company for the, for the Germans. And that everything black is part of second company. So this has the second platoon and third platoon from the second company. And each platoon is then, you know, divided into three squads and a leader. Um, the, th the other numbers, the one on the left, the green one on the left is your firepower versus um, infantry units, soft targets. The little number in green next to it is your range. So for you, you have a firepower of one in a range of 10, okay? Right. And then the cohesion number is the number on the bottom right. So, so that's like morale and training and all that. Yeah. Stuff. yeah. So like if you if you sustain a hit, uh, you're probably going to have to, there's a possibility you might have to roll on that cohesion. Or if you try to rally troops that are disrupted, you'll have to roll that number or less to, to rally them. So basically, the stuff on the left-hand side is uh, attacking stuff, and yep. the stuff on the right-hand side is like defensive stuff. It is. And then you mm -hmm. have one uh, machine gun unit down at the bottom. Uh -huh. That machine gun unit is attached to either of your platoons, second or third. And whoever he is closest to, when it's time to activate, he activates with that platoon. Right. So if he's close to one of your second platoon guys, he'll activate with them. If he's closer with the third platoon guys, he'll activate with them, but not both. Right. Okay? So he's like a free agent. He'll use his machine gun wherever it's needed, closest. Yeah. He's an ad hoc unit, right? He's he's yeah. he's a attachment to to your uh platoon. So that's the anatomy of a of a uh, of a unit, you do know so there's like no movement, right? So, yes, I'm just going to ask that. What's, yeah. what's the movement? So it depends on the activation, and we will go into that when we get to that. Um, okay. Just a quick thing: there are t two states that you can be in during a game turn. When I say turn, I say that very loosely because there are no actual game turns in this. When we start an activation cycle. Uh, we're going to see who it has the initiative and who does not have the initiative. So when you have the initiative, you can do more. You can move farther than when you don't have the initiative. And you'll be able to initiate more things when you have the initiative than when you don't. And official in the game is, you have the you're the initiative player or you're the reaction player okay yeah okay so let's talk about the sequence of play very quickly i won't go into great detail here because we'll, we'll go through it you know slowly as we start to play but the first thing we're going to do is you're going to do the initiative phase you're each going to roll a die and you're going to possibly add a modifier to that and in this scenario, the modifiers are, we bring up the missions, initiative. The Germans have a plus two initiative. Quite right. And what that means is, if you had the initiative on the previous turn, you may add to, to your initiative role for, for the present turn. Oh, so it's not every, it's the first turn is just as is, and then whoever wins, right. I win, I get a plus two next time. You automatically have the initiative for the first turn. Oh, right. So I'll get that plus two no. next time. You'll get it yeah. next time. And yeah. if you lose it to, to uh, Tony, then the next time you guys roll, you won't get that plus two. Ah. Only 
you get to you get it when you had it on the previous turn. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So that's how that works. Um, so after we decide who has initiative, and we know it's you on the first turn, then you're going to do a thing called coordination. Normally, when you have the initiative, like you do now, Ruff, mm -hmm. yeah, you will um, get to activate your platoons. And Tony will be the reaction player. He will react to the things that you do. And the first thing what you do is when you roll for coordination is normally you get to add, you can activate one platoon at a time. When you activate a platoon, you do everything with the platoon that you want to do for its activation cycle. And then you pass for reactions to Tony. Right. And then Tony will do his reactions and pass it back to you if you would like to do reactions. I see. And this will go back and forth until you both pass. And when that happens, the activation cycle is done and we move on to other stuff in the sequence of play. And we'll right. get to that in a second. <clears throat> um, just real quick, the coordination table rough is on that same page. I've got it. Um, I've got yep, it there, okay. yeah. Okay. And basically, basically what it allows you to do is if you gain, which is a 1, uh, 8 through 10, if you gain coordination, you have the choice. You may activate two platoons at the same time if you'd like. Ah. You don't have to. It's not mandatory, but you're allowed to. And in certain, certain, certain circumstances, you're going to want to do that. In others, you may not want to do that. Okay? Right. All right, so that's coordination. That's all of the um, initiative phase. And then we go to activation, just like I told you. And I will come back to the activation because that's the heart of the game. After you do all of the activation, move, shoot, rally, um, recover, it's called in this game. Sorry if I get some of the term terminology wrong, but it's all kind of the same thing. I'll try this, to, is this is the problem, isn't it, when you play I know, I'll try to be good about it, but, you know. Um, so you'll do all your movement. You'll do all of your uh, firing actions. And you'll do all your recoveries. And then when you're all done, as the initiative player, you're all done, and the reaction player is all done, we move on to the fire resolution. So you're not going to get to see the outcome of your firing until it's all said and done, which is, oh. very, which is a very interesting mechanic, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, this game has um, a lot of covering fire where you'll fire some of your guys to, to suppress your enemy and then move other guys up in advance. And it's all happening at the same time. And so, oh, everything's happening simultaneously. You yeah. plan it piece by piece but it doesn't happen until you finished all that and then it all happens at once yeah and then you and you do all that fire resolution uh, you're, well, hoping, that's... you're hoping that you did good right you didn't leave yeah. the guys that are running down the open with their <laughs> pants around their ankles right yeah yeah watch watch this space yep <laughs> so we'll do all of that and then we will do all the assault resolution where you actually move into an opponent's a hex and do melee combat. After that is mortar fire adjustment phase. We won't get into any more stuff. We have no mortars, but we'll right. save that for the next time we play. Then we're going to do, we determine the time lapse. The initiative player will roll on this time lapse table and see how many minutes pass. So it could be either two to five minutes per activation. Because this game, as we were saying in the in the green room, doesn't have turns. You have a certain amount of time to do this, and you're Correct. using up you're using up time, or you're making time because you found a shortcut to do this stuff. Once you've used the time up, you've lost. Yeah. If if you have if the game the game will end this game will end at forty six minutes or right. more. I'm not sure if anybody's aware of that. I wasn't. It's it's not done on turns. It's done on minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's one of the things I really like about the game. I think it's yeah, crazy. Very unique. And you never know how many turns you're going to get, right? Because if you roll a bunch of low numbers and you're only going two minutes every activation, you're going to get a lot of opportunity to, to do what you need mm -hmm. to do. 
But if you're rolling nines and tens and you're rolling five minutes, you're going to become under, you know, great pressure to get it done. That means you're hesitating if you think yep. about the narrative. Exactly. Yeah. It's, um, oh. yeah, it's, it's very, it's very unique in that way. Kyle Holmes has quick yeah. question as a really clean, but uh, on this, but I'm purely a solo game. It plays solo quite well. That's why I got it. Kyle. The only thing it does have is like hidden units. Um, but I don't ever play with it when I'm doing it solo. I just don't do hidden units. It's not a big deal. Um, I, I, I really enjoy it. Solitaire. I think it plays really well by I, not solitaire solo. Right. There's a, I'm, yeah, I'm, there is a difference between yeah, yeah, but yeah, for solo play, I think it's very good. It's not a solitaire game though. Solitaire for me is a game that's designed to be played by one person. You know, yeah. playing a two-player game that's playing it solo. You're playing two-handed, aren't you? Yep. Yeah, yeah, but and it does solo pretty well. I can I yeah. can see the and if and hidden setup, yeah, that's not that big of a deal. It doesn't yeah, break the game. You, know, you kind of have to overlook that. <laughs> There's ways around that. If yep. you want to do it, yeah. And then after that, we'll do a cleanup phase, which is just basically administration stuff. We're going to get rid of, you know, some things and you clear up the game board and get it ready for the for the next turn. Right. Let's go back to um, the uh, activation phase. So, Ruff, why don't you go ahead and roll one 10 sided die and see if you get coordination or not? There you go, Gareth. Gareth's got the right idea. Just, just do it randomly. Yeah, Gareth's a great fan of this game. He could keep us honest with the rules. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing some other ones, and I'm I get a little sometimes I get a little confused. Tell me about it. Go ahead, Ruff. Roll a die ten and see if you get coordination or not. You're looking for eight or better. Just the uh, what's this one, two, three, four? That's the amount of die. Oh, it's different colors, isn't it? Yeah, and that's a that's a, yeah, you're gonna roll four dice with different colors. Just roll the one single die. Oh, no, he gets that. coordination. Well, okay. So rough, you have a choice. You can uh activate both platoons if you want, or you can activate just one platoon. Now well, I'm not sure what I'm doing, and you're here, Mike, to to yes. gently tell me that's not quite correct. Rough, do it, do something. But it might be good to activate both because I want to get them on the board. Yeah, I don't think it's really going to matter at this no. point, to be honest with you. You're pretty far away, and you can just go ahead and activate them both and just get them going because you're not going to get a lot of incoming fire on this turn. So, what is the stacking limit? So, if you look. If you look at your combat table button. Oh, hold on. Combat tables. Hold on. Yeah. So look at that and then look at the um, – at um, where's that? So I've got the real thing here. I prefer the real thing. There it's the last one, recovery, concealment. Um, blind hexes and stacking limits are below that. It's the back, oh, yeah. or it's it's inside. Rough. I've got it. It's in on the back. Yes, yeah, on the back of the bifold. Yeah. So you can see there, stacking limits, number of units allowed per hex, squads three, machine guns two. You can have a towed gun, one fortified, and two vehicles. Right. Now, just because you can have all that doesn't mean it's good to have all that. <laughs> no, it's easier to hit like most games when you. Yeah. Overstack, if yeah? you overstack then you're going to take a penalty when they're shooting at you. Yeah. So basically, four steps. So each unit, full unit, is two steps. Okay? So when a full squad gets uh, takes a hit and they have to uh, take a casualty, you will replace them with a half squad. So a full squad is two steps. A half squad is one step. If you have more than four steps in a in a hex, then you're going to take a penalty. So, two squads at max is safe. It's good. It's sort of yes, it's safe. Right. but <clears throat> you do get shot. The hex is getting shot at, not an individual unit. Right. So when you get shot, the best cohesion unit has to take the if it, if it 
if there's a role that's needed, the best cohesion unit will take that role. Yeah. And if they fail the role, then um, everybody else in the stack is going to have to take a cohesion. Right. If they pass, they're going to be okay. So the leader, the leader has benefits for cohesion. It's yes. Gonna, yeah, it's going to help you when um, if you put a leader that has a higher cohesion uh -huh. than your um, than any of the squads with him, then the um, attacker is going to have to subtract one from his attack die when he attacks you. Right. They're also going to help you in other ways in the game. We'll kind of get into them when you get there. They're very. They're also really important when you don't have initiative, because you're real limited as a reaction player what you can do and who you can who you can um, activate. And if they're with a leader, it makes it easier for you to activate them as a reaction player. Right. Okay. Okay. Your movement allowance, you have two different types of movement allowance. That's what you're going to do now. You're coming on the board. You're going to, you're going to activate like second platoon. Yeah. And you're going to give each squad in second platoon an order. And that order is going to be either shoot, move, or recover. And, of course, you're going to move because you're yeah. not on the board. And what is the movement allowance? Three movement points if you use movement points. Or... Oh. Or <laughs> two hex max, regardless of the terrain. Yep, yep. That's what I like about, it. and you have to declare it before you do it. Yeah, I tell you what, Mike gave me a bit of advice before we started this. He said, "Take out of your head every other game you've played, tactical game, because um, this is a little different. Don't get uh, mushed up with uh, other yeah. games you played." And it's you're quite right, Mike. <laughs> yes, it's very so, good. So, so another act, you've yeah. got that difficult terrain, and maybe you don't have enough movement points, like to go from one woods hex and go through two wood hexes, right? Yeah. You wouldn't have enough. So let's say you were in D, you were in D uh, eleven, and you move straight ahead. I'm yeah. sorry, G eleven, and you go into you know G ten. If you're using movement points, that would be two movement points would get you into there. And then you don't have enough movement points to go into another wood hex. But if you use the two movement hex, yeah, yeah. you get to go into both of them. <clears throat> out here in the open, you'd use movement points, right? So you can go three hexes out in the open. Mm. Now... Right. Rather than the movement. <clears throat> Let me just clear up. I am the... I mean, rather than the other one. Yeah. Yeah. But I am the attacker or defender? You are the attacker. So where is Tony? Or do I not know? You do you not don't know. know. He's set up hidden. Rotter. <laughs> so okay. He's out here. You know what he's trying to defend. Yeah. So, you know, you can make an educated guess, which will probably be not too educated, but. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mac. Right, I'll get me coat. See you later, guys. <laughs> I'll, be here all, I'll be here all week. So, what we're thinking is I've got to take over five buildings and a church, which is the cross shaped one, I assume. Right. And remember, you can get E1 really easy, right? And buildings only cost one to go into. So you could just run a squad straight into E11 and take it on, on this first <clears> round. <throat> yeah, so we'll do that. So we'll... So pick a platoon to activate. Are you going to... You must that? activate one platoon and use them only. Right. So you're going to activate... Going... Sorry, Mike, what? Are you going to activate second? Yeah. Okay. Shouldn't I? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think so, but um, you, yeah. keep, you probably want to keep them together, right? You, if you're yeah. gonna keep the if, two keep the two um, platoons together, yeah. All right, if you're gonna have second go down south and you're gonna have third go up on the top and across. Maybe, maybe. Hold on. We, you know, he's in the room. Shush, Mike. 
<laughs> I can see what you're doing. <laughs> I can see what you're doing. So, you know. oh, I'm joking. Right. So, yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll keep, or well, actually, no, I think what I'll do is use um, second platoon to go north. Well, I think. Well, well, look at look at your two different platoons, right? Yeah. Second, look at their cohesions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Second, second platoon's got a six, six, six. Your other one has a five, six, seven. So you think it's going to be a harder gig for the second platoon going south, yeah? So we need well, higher cohesion. I don't know. You know, I mean, it's interesting the way that they kind of laid out in front of you. This is why, you know, I'm rubbish at tactics. So obviously why I love it, yeah, because it's, you have to, yeah. So, all right, we'll go back back where we were. We'll activate um, the first right. the and, third and, platoon. And there's no opportunity fire in this game. Wherever you end up now, the way so let me I should explain reaction you. fire, isn't it? I should, yes, I should I should tell you how Tony works. Tony is the reaction player. Mm -hmm. He cannot do anything with any of his units. Let me, let me rephrase that. He may react with units that actually see one of your units do something. Yeah. So if you run and he has a line of sight to where you ran and you ran through it, he saw you move, he will be able to react, do a full reaction with that unit. So it's like an overwatchy type of thing. Exactly. And he'll take a – but – he is restricted. He can shoot at anything that he sees do something. He can maneuver if he sees something do something. But he is at a two movement point, one hex max. So you're a three two. He's a two one. He gets two movement points or one hex max. Why? Why is there a difference? Because he's the reactionary player. Right. But that will swap when I'm the reactionary player. If I right. do. Yeah, if you're a reactionary player, you have those instructions. Right. So I'm asking these questions because I know nothing about this game. And uh, there might be some people watching that know nothing about this game that think, yeah, I want to play it. Yep. It's, so far, I love it. Right. So we've got a platoon, sorry, squad three. Yeah, just get him going. He can't shoot at you. If you're going to run in that building, oh, go, I can you? move now. Yeah. Yep. Yes. We're going to move one, two, three into the building, yeah? Yep. You're going to put anything else in there with them? I'm going to put uh, another squad in there just to give it a bit of a loop. One, two, three. That's fine, isn't it? Yep. And then we've got uh, the leader and – oh, is that what I've got? That for a second platoon, yes. Yeah. Uh, you want to give the machine gun to second platoon. Yeah, you can do that, yeah. I think I will. Right. <clears throat> and so we'll move. Hmm. Now then, do we do creepy crawlies? So he could be an F6, couldn't he? How'd you put the ring, the ring of death thing on here? Unfortunately, they don't have that. What? Have a word with Mike Dennison, please. It doesn't work in this game, which is very irritating. Yeah. Because he well, might have somebody in F if you if you put your mouse over a hex in the center, it'll bring up the enlarge the hex number. We can call it out. Oh, F six, yeah. So you might have somebody in F six. You see, so if I creepy crawly down the bottom there through those uh, light colored woods, I assume the light color are light woods and the darker ones are heavy woods. No, they're just woods. Oh, just to make it make yeah. it. No, 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 no. There is, there's difference in this game. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Well, there is, but we don't have any heavy. I don't think we have any heavy woods. That looks really heavy. Well, I'd call that. I'd call. I'd call them um, down down the bottom right there. I'd call that woods, and then okay. the, the ones in the middle, heavy no, woods. Yeah, no, no, those are heavy. You oh, know, okay. You got F six and F seven are heavy woods. Okay. The stuff up in F9, those are heavy. These lighter color are the other. 
Hold on, where's F? F7. Yeah, F. so F9 is heavy, and then down the bottom here, we've got C11. That's light. You're just wood. Yep. Right. Okay. And the difference in the um, in the two is um, movement's the same uh, for non-vehicle, so that doesn't matter. Right. The level is a little bit higher for the heavy woods. It's two instead of one. There's no elevation in this, so it won't matter. And your terrain effect modifier is the same. So for all due purposes for this game, it doesn't it's matter. Same. It's, it's the all, same thing. It's all the same. Yep, I gotcha. Right. But it will be in other scenarios. Yes. So, well, I've got to get round there, haven't I? I've got to get round there. So you got to go, man. That time, right? You're 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 gonna probably end up having to take some chances. Yeah, I'm gonna to have to sort of hold our breath. Oh, and, uh, the other thing is, you cannot use the half hexes on the bottom or the top of the map. Yep. No, no Sorry. half hexes. On the bottom or top. Right. But I can on the side. Yes. Yes. Where you're coming on from. Yes. Yeah. So one, two, three. There's that. Uh, you can't you can't go that far with that one. You can't get that far. Now if you're using if you're using movement points, it would be one, two, three and a half. And you only have three. Why? Is, I thought I could move. How is it? Oh, oh, it's only how many hexes can I move if I'm not using two? Points? Two. How can, how did I move into this house then? Because it's clear. Because houses cost one, and and you use movement points, not max. Right. Gotcha. Okay. So I can only move. So that's one. Yes. Yep. Well. Two. It that's two, yeah. The woods would be two and a half or three and a half because woods is a one and a half moving point. So I can't move into the woods yet. No, no, that's correct. Correct. But then again, like next turn with that group of uh, stack of stuff, you could use the two hex maximum and, and just move to the edge, of, move yep, to yep. the edge of the wood. Yeah. Right to the edge. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. How yeah. do you get rid of all those movement things? Um, Don't worry about it. Yeah, Mike's gonna Mike's gonna take care of it for me. Well, no, he gets to react, so we can remember who moved and oh, right, where you moved and all that stuff. Yeah. So you call for reaction from Tony. Well, Tony. he gets to activate both platoons. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. If you want to, you can do both. Well, I think I will. Okay. So we'll have. Oops. Let's bring these okay, up. Uh, I want to go over one more thing with you, Ralph, so you can kind, oh, of, yeah, yeah. kind of important for you. If you would open up your combat tables and look at the um, the small arms fire, you need to understand your range and where you need to be effective so you know kind of what you're looking at being shot at. Or the small shoot. arms multifier resolution thing. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the way this works is it's a little bit different again, like than most. Have so you got the have you got the table up, Tom? Yeah, I do. Good, good. So take we're just gonna go all your squads are the same. They have a firepower of one and yeah. a range of ten, right? Yeah. Yep. So if you look across the very top, you have a four, eight, ten, twelve, fifteen. Those are ranges. Every hold on. Hold on. Where, every, where am I Sorry, where am I looking? The very top of that chart that says 4, oh, yeah. 10, 12, 15. Yep, gotcha. So small those, small those, arms fire DRM table. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So those are your columns. Every one of those 4, 8, 10, 12, 15, yep. there's one, a unit of the game has got that number for their range. Right. Your range is 10. Uh huh. So you're going you're gonna to look down this column and you're going to find out what range you're actually shooting. So one to three hexes, you would be on that call, uh, that row. A four, you'd be on that row. Five hex range, shooting at five yeah. away, or six through ten. And if you look to the far left, those are your minus yeah. or no die roll modifier. But minus you've also got some other things below it, yeah? Right, and minuses are bad. 
non minuses are good. Right. Okay. So you can see you're very effective one to three hexes away. Tony's range is eight. So he's really effective at two hexes away. Ah. So you have a slight advantage in your firepower at range than Tony does. So the way this works is, let's say you were shooting from one to three away. We're going to figure out all of your die roll modifiers. So for range, you would have no modifier. You'd be at a zero. Yeah. Split fire. Let's say you're not doing that. Motion okay. fire. Um, <clears throat> that's if somebody moves um, one or two hexes away from you during the current turn. That's something reaction fire would use. Per hindrance, hex contains a friendly vehicle, suppressed fire. When you get shot at, you're going to have uh, these die roll modifier markers on you. For every two, it's minus one. So if Tony would put three markers on you, you would be at minus one. When he put the fourth one on, you'd be at minus two. Oh, crikey, yes, there's these marker things, isn't there? Yes. Okay, if regrouping fire, if you're regrouping, it's a minus. Obscured, concealed target, go to ground, all of this stuff. Your positives, infillade, which is, a, which is a vehicle thing, target density, right? Per two steps over four, you get to add one to your attack. So don't overstack. Right. Proximity fire, if they move within two hexes of you, and terrain effects. So woods gives a plus one. So if he's in the woods and you're firing one to three away, it would be a um, you would be a minus one. One, yep, minus one, yep. So you can kind of see. He's really effective up to, and he can only go up to eight away, shoot you up eight away, and he starts <clears throat> falling off at uh, three hexes. You start falling off at four hexes. Yeah, so I need just to keep back and fire from a little distance. Yeah, or you need to get in and go to hand-to-hand -to -hand and get them tied up. Because if, if anybody's in hand-to-hand, -hand, if, if you assault a hex, then that hex is tied up. You can't shoot out of it. Yeah. Well, you can run one guy in and tie up a whole big old hex while the rest of you guys go running around. All a bit gamey. <laughs> well, if they, were, if they had a guy on their face, they'd be very busy with them. Well, I suppose if somebody's running around firing ad hoc and thinking they haven't got a clue what's going on. I, mean, uh, I know if I had a guy 10 yards away from me and somebody's running 50 yards away from me and the guy is at 10 is got bayonets and is coming right at me. Yeah, I don't know how I'm shooting that. Yeah, yeah. So while he's doing that, I can nip round the back. Yeah, and do exactly. do some do some nonsense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I think uh, so. It's two hexes. That's so no one can only shoot two. Sorry, no can only shoot two. Yeah. Pretty much anywhere you move, you're going to be okay. Yeah. So I'm going to. Well, now the other thing is, once you control a building, you control it. When you, you move out, you yeah. still last person to enter last a building person. control. Right. Okay. Sole sole occupant of that building. Right. So the last person to the last side to control it controls it until the other side gets in there. Right. Yeah, it takes it back from you. So one, two, and oh, it's a seven, isn't it? You can go three with that one, Ralph, because you can use movement points and it's open. Yep, it's open. You can go one more. Three. There you go. And we'll think I'll use one, two, three. Okay. And then, uh, actually, would it be best to um, use the five with the leader because the leader then gives it a minus one? Uh. Yeah, and that's what you... Oh, yeah. Because these are both six, these remaining units, aren't they? Right. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll be okay, Ralph. I'm going to be honest with you. The only time the leader helps with cohesion is when you're recovering. Right. Okay. Except um, there is a minus one, right, for leader. If if the leader is higher firepower than your, I'll, I'll find it. Right. I've got I'm, what I'm going to do then is be a bit cheeky and uh, use this five and that six there. That's all I'm going to do. Swap them over. Let me bring up my uh and then put that with that. Right. Uh hmm. so we're just gonna move these three. I can move those three, yes, yeah, so yep, yep, because they're open terrain, yeah. They're open terrain, right. Yeah. Still trying to get my head round either or <laughs> yeah, it's it so if you think about it, Ruff, the best way to think about it is if you're open. You can go three. If there's woods, you have to use two axes. Right. So. You use the other way of moving. Yeah. 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 And yeah. and if you're uh, if you're doing both, you just you just can't. So you might as well just go two axes. Yeah. <laughs> so so. Okay, so okay. Okay. So you're all done. So now you would ask. You would say, okay. Uh, you'd call for my reaction. Tony, are you going to react? Um. Now, Tony, for you, what's really important to look at is on that uh, combat table. Yeah. The loss of you know, concealment loss. Mm -hmm. So on the back page of your thing, they're rough. You have concealment loss. Concealment loss. So not the units, units lose concealment when they are disrupted, shot, maneuver, chase into, or enter an enemy occupied hatch. In addition, units lose concealment immediately if they maneuver into or fire from an open terrain hex within hex, uh, eight hexes and line of sight of an enemy. Well, they didn't move in any open terrain hexes, so move, that, that, can, that he can see. They, follow, can see. they conduct fire from a cover terrain hex in the line of sight within two hexes. Don't tell me you're in the woods, Tony. So if Tony was to shoot, he would lose his hidden status. Sure, yeah. But he would be concealed, most likely, depending on where he's set up at. Um, if he shoots and you're not within two, you're he's not going to lose concealment. You will know where he is, but he'll be concealed. So I have to find him? If he... If he shoots, he'll be able to see me if I'm shoot. You know, I, there's just a concealed marker on it, so it's like a modifier. Yeah. I'll he'll just modify, right? He'll lose. <clears throat> so you'll know where he is, but he'll still be concealed. And you can't look at what he has there. Right. Right. Mm. But I can I'm going to with the DRM. Right. I'm going to pass because the DRMs are just too much right now. So that was two. So he passed. Rough, you're done. So that is finished. So go ahead and work your way through. I'm still looking for this for you, Tony. I know we were talking about this when we were playing, and I found. You found it? Yeah. Word. So next we would do fire resolution, but I didn't fire, and you didn't fire, so we skip over that. So, so if you're looking at sequence of play. <clears throat> There's no assault. There's no assault. We don't have any mortars. So then we determine the time. So, Ruff, what you need to do, yeah. do you see where the time lapse uh, um, table is right underneath the coordination table? Hold on. It's right on the uh, time chart. Oh, or, on the time chart. Hold on. Hold on. Time lapse, yes. Yes. So, what you're doing, because you're the active player, you're going to roll a single D10 and yeah. we're going to adjust depending on what you roll. So. Uh, here we go then. Five. So a five. So it will move up three minutes. So go ahead and move the time lapse up three minutes. Towards you, yes. Uh, down to three. No, no, no. Not up on the casualty track. On the time track. Where it's oh. a, there's minutes, ten minutes, an hour. So we're just moving this up five. Was it? No, three. No, three. Three yep. here. There we go. Yep. There you go. So that's right. it. So now you have forty. 
what is it now? 43 minutes to win. Or 40. actually 42, because if 40. you have 46, yeah. I win. So, okay. So 40. then there is, so that's it. So the nice, hey, Ruff, the nice thing about this yeah. is you see the, if you go all the way up to the top where all the buttons are, oh, you go me. all the way over, almost all the way over to the right of the buttons. Well, I don't know if they're, but there's a yellow button that says end turn. It's like three from the end, four from the end. End turn, yep. Hit that button. Ooh. It clears everything. So what, what we did not do, Ralph, is if you right-click on your unit, uh, mm -hmm. yes, yes. there's we'll, an action. We'll start doing that. Yeah, yeah. And there's an action, so you'll want to, whatever action you choose, that's one. So right. that tells clear. you what I'm that tells you what I'm doing. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then that button clears all that off too. So we forgot to do that. But it wouldn't have mattered. Any. It's not going to yeah, matter. Yeah, I'm only moving, you know. Yeah. Yep. All right. Back to initiative. So, yep. So, Ruff, roll. you get a plus two modifier, and I get nothing. So, we roll 1d10, and high number wins. Right. Here so, we go. I rolled an eight. Oh. oh. Okay. So, oh. I get initiative, which I don't want. <laughs> no. Well, you do, because you actually do, because now his reaction can't move as well. Yeah. And you're going to eat time up. Yep. No, that's true. Um, honestly, I'm going to pass. Well, there you go. He passed to you. So now, Ruff, you mm -hmm. did not see him do anything. So you are restricted to um, a restricted reaction. And let's get there. I want to make sure I get it all correct mm -hmm. for you. Uh, actions. Yeah, because it's it's limited. You're with the leader. Exactly. You can activate. You're you you're looking at eight point one. Eight point limited. Eight point three. Limited reactions. My poor old rules. I've took them. To Spain and stuck them in my bag, and they're all dog eared now, and it's horrible. And I ate it. No, uh, no, oh. iPad. Well, yeah, yes, all right, but I couldn't know. A <laughs> unit that did not observe any, I'll get the iron out. It's <laughs> more limited to any reactions after any enemy who calls for a reaction as follows A leader may maneuver or recover. And in addition, may direct units of its platoon or company, if it's Russian, um, to maneuver or recover if at the beginning of its reaction those units are. So a leader can and anybody in, 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 in his um, platoon or company stack with the, okay, if they're stacked with a leader in a forest or building hex. So if you have a leader in a building. I do. Uh, do I or not? Hold on. What's under this? No, I don't. No, it's, that's clear, isn't it? Okay. Within one hex of a leader and all units, including the leader, are in open ground, orchard, palm, brush, or connecting road. So your leader that's in the open or if anybody within one in the open can react. So Lang can react, and everybody with Lang can do a limited uh, reaction. So that means maneuver. I can move. And where's your other leader at? The other leader uh, is um, in G11. G11. He can also do a limited reaction. And which means you could do a maneuver with them. Yeah. You can go either two mover points or one hex. Which if you're moving into the trees, yeah, that's like it's gonna be it. one hex, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll just move those in then, I think. Uh, oh, Nerd Workshop is in, and I know he's a big fan of the game. Yeah, yeah. Play tester the lot. 
Yep. So uh, just so you know, we were just going through the rules with Ruff uh, and what a re uh, what a limited reaction. We weren't really looking up something. Yep. Uh, we were just going through those rules. And no, just... I think they've got the unenviable task of teaching me without me reading the rules because I didn't have time. So it's it's a beginner's beginner's uh, master class for these two, which will help anybody oh, else that's watching that Ralph, doesn't know how to play it. Yeah. Right-click your units and put oh, yeah. the maneuver action. Hey, John, how you doing? Well, that's cool. I like that, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And you needed uh, not, yeah, yeah well, those are the two that you moved. So is that right? Yeah, you're supposed to do it for each unit. Cool. Um, Blimey. Well, it's okay. So, Our top's fine. We know that. Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, because if I do, all if moved, I do since they all moved, it's okay. Yeah, if I do different things, I'll put different things yeah. on you them. And in the rules, they say you don't even have to use them. You can just rotate your counters, whatever you like. This is just an aid in these. This small well, amount of units, it's really easy to remember yeah, what's if, going on. If you're, if you're not playing live or videoing, it, it doesn't matter really. You just make a, you know, you just tell the other chap or chap S and say, you know, that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> um, uh, uh, Nerd Workshop says you're doing good, Mike. So. <laughs> okay. Um, well I'm going to, so Roth, then you would call for my reaction again, correct? Is that Go right? on then, have a reaction. I'm going to pass. Do a, Di a Diana Ross chemical reaction. <laughs> okay, well, you have no choice but to pass, Roth, so. I can't, I can't do anything else, can I? So, nope. Yeah. So basically we go to the what what does Mitch always say? Follow the sequence of play? Yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a thingy for that, isn't he? What they're about. <laughs> Uh, fire resolution. Uh, we've already, there's no fire resolution. We're not <laughs> nobody's assaulting. And so I get to roll for the time lapse. So what I'm hoping for is a very large number. You're trying to make me get out of time. Yeah. Yes. That's not a very large number, <laughs> but it's another three minutes. Another three. Okay. All right. Okay. Back to oh, uh, and we hit the and turn button, and boom, everything disappears. All right, now so, just sorry, just looking on the time track, we've yeah. got the time lapse 10 minutes there, we've got a time lapse one hour. Mm -hmm. what, what are they? They're not doing so. Anything. Once we hit 10 minutes, we start moving the 10 minutes. So we're not going to do right. one hour because our... I'm being very dense. I just couldn't wonder if they were so they don't really need to be on there, do they yet? Uh, well, no, they're on zero right now. So the hour, the hour one doesn't need to be there, but we do need the green one because you're going to be doing it. We'll, we'll yeah, yeah, get, I, yeah, sorry, it's me being dense, me being rough. Don't worry about it. So. Well, <laughs> you're good. You're, there's no stupid questions, just stupid people. I mean, I'm yeah, sorry. There's it, no, no, just... You're quite. Thanks, Tone. Uh, you're off the Christmas card list. You know that. <laughs> don't you? All right, isn't that that's right? There's no stupid questions, just dummies that ask them. Just, just stupid. <laughs> Stupid YouTubers. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to initiative. Um, right. So I'm going get... to roll. I rolled a three. And he does not get any plus. I don't, I don't get any. It's only, it's only me that gets it if I get the initiative next That's turn. That's correct. Mm -hmm. so you, need roll, you need to roll. Yeah. Eight, get in. All right. Turn okay, Ruff. Back in charge. Yeah. So now what you need to do, Ruff, is roll on the coordination table. All oh, right, to see who I can and what with. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two. Uh, so you have to uh, activate them individually. Yep. So either... Um, second or third. Second platoon. or third platoon. Right, okay. Um, ooh. Let's activate uh, second platoon. All right, second's going to be activated, and we're start going out, start out activating. Oh, this is where I'm going to take a bit of a chance. If you if you double click on your counters, it'll expand your stack. Yep. And then you can click on either one of them, then right click and give them probably right. going to be a maneuver order because you can't shoot anything, you can't recover. Nope. You've got to move, so right click on the unit that you're going to move, go maneuver, and then. Do start. I have to do them separately and move them separately? Um, it doesn't matter in this game. 
because there's no opportunity fire. Yep. Mm. Right, because you're waiting for the reaction. Yeah. Yep. Right. So you could move them together if you want or separately. I but think I, I'm going to move them together. So we'll, we've got the, the one. Is it two? Uh, two hex. Uh, so you can just do, if you're going into the woods, you'd want to do the two hex. So it wouldn't yeah. matter. Two hexes yeah. is the most you could go if you're going into the woods. Yep. Right. You can there get we go. there using either either method. And then this this lot down here, we're going to uh, maneuver. Well, if Tony was there, you wouldn't have been able to move there. Once he, you got adjacent to Tony, Tony would have to put his unit up and stuff would have to happen. So if he was hiding in the woods and I moved into that hex, as you say, stuff would happen, yeah? Yeah, yep. but what you get with him, whatever it was, he'd have to show himself and then... Oh, it's put a maneuver counter under every one there. That's weird. Right, okay. You probably highlighted them all when you did the right yeah. click. So. It doesn't matter, does it? Okay, so We're all moving anyway. Oh, crikey. Uh... I can use the half hexes on the top and bottom, yeah? No, you cannot use the ah. top and bottom. Well, we're just going to move here then. You're going to put everybody... Oh, never mind. Yep. You're, you're put there. Well, you you are over... No, no, you're not over stacked. You have no, it's all these maneuver counters. <laughs> you have three steps in there. Um Leaders do not count as a step. So I've got uh, – so the machine gun is one step and yes. the, the, the squad is two. Right. All right. Now you're done. Now I just want to point something out, okay? Uh-oh. Got to give you a little bit how the back and forth works. Let's say your machine gun was in uh, C-11. To start this turn and the right. other guys did what they did before you would like maybe do something with c11 you could you could pass then c11 was not activated then when you gave when you passed over to tony and let's say tony does something that that machine gun and c11 could see then when yeah. he passes back to you, you could react with that machine gun and probably fire at him. So there are times when you're going to activate some of your guys and leave some of your guys maybe to react to what the enemy is going to do. Well, that's to be fair, um, that's sort of what I was going to do next time they activated. I, but there you go. Yeah. Okay. okay, so it's my reaction now. So yeah. I am going to react. Oh, my God. What are you doing? So for you, for Ruff, if Tony doesn't react right now because you did something, if he passes, then those group could not do anything against those guys that have, that have uh, activated. So when he passes and he reacts, he immediately has to react to the people that just did something. If he if it he lets that go and passes back to you, he can never do anything to them again. Because he's missed the opportunity. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna make two uh fires, um, one from the machine gun and one from the squad on uh E9. Okay, what's your what's your distance? Uh that is three. So we're gonna do my machine gun first. So oh, rough, you're gonna go through this. You. Yep, you're firing on them. Okay, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason is because it's three away and not four away. That makes a big difference to me. Yep. So, um, so for the machine gun, for for the die roll modifiers, let's take a look at that. Um, I have a range of ten, or it's a yeah range of ten. Range so I'm in 10. the ten column here, and it is three hexes away. So I will not have a die roll modifier for the range so right yeah. now my uh uh i'm currently at a one okay 
So one. Yes, because he has a firepower. I have a firepower one. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> so the bottom, the bottom left hand, big number. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So um, not split firing, no motion fire, um, no hindrances. Uh, hex contains vehicle friendly vehicle. Nope. Not suppressed. Nope. Regrouping. Nope. Obscured target. Nope. Conceal. Nope. Go to ground. Nope. Night. Now. And then none of the other ones are good except for the terrain modifier. So the terrain modifier for heavy woods is a minus one. Yeah. So that nets to a zero. Oh, so they take it away from your firepower. Yep. yep. Right. Mm -hmm. yep. So what you're going to do, Ralph, is um, you are going to right click uh, the unit. Um, so you'll have to double click and expand it. And right click the unit and then place it at what is it, an SDM marker? I can never remember what yeah. it is. Yeah. S A D R M. Small arms. That's what it means. Small arms terrifying. On which unit? Uh it doesn't matter. Oh, because uh, it goes into the hex. Correct. So I don't need to split it, just need to put it on top of the yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Sorry, action. What we got? Where are we going? Marking. Not action markers. Place S A D R M. Is that the yes. one? Okay. Oh, oh, right. Yep. So just so you know, you can you would adjust that one plus or minus. Unfortunately, this is a zero, so I can't show you how to do that. Um, but all you do is you put one, two, or three, like you actually push the numbers for it to go up, or you do shift one, two, or three to go down. So if it's a minus two, you do shift two. We had to figure that one out. <laughs> so, okay. So that was my first shot. Now my second shot's a little different. And this is where it comes in. So you've actually shot at me at a zero thing. You're trying to build this number up to a positive, yeah? Well. No. No. I would like a positive, but that doesn't. We're going to add another marker on there. Yep. He's going to shoot with his squad. Because another unit is firing, not the same unit. Correct. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, this one's going to be different. This is a little bit different oh. rating value. Yep. So Sorry, this one's going to be different. So it's an eight range. So an eight range at three hexes is a minus one. So we already have a minus one. Then we have the plus one for the firepower. So that's a net zero. Yeah. But I get a minus one for the woods because everything else stays the same. So there's no if once you go through it once. And that's the that will be the one thing rough. Once you learn the modifiers, it goes a lot faster. Kind of yeah, like when you yeah. play next war. It, it's like most games, isn't it? Once yep. you play a couple of yeah. couple of sort of. Scenes. So now you'll put another counter in there. So right click, place another one, and go shift one on it when you hover over it and make it a minus one. So, hold on, come here. Markers. Yeah. And shift what? one. I have to push one as well, yeah? Yeah, yep. shift one. Yep. There you go. Now, what that signifies, Ruff, he's going to roll one die for the zero, and he's going to roll one die for the minus one. And add two units, yep. And then, no, it's for, for markers. Every time he puts a marker in there, he gets to roll a die. Because, but you only put a marker on when a different unit attacks, yeah? Yes, Five. every time right. someone else attacks... So if he wanted to shoot with more guys, he could put more on. More markers on, right? So throwing more dice, so he, he improves his odds of one of. And all it meant, he takes the highest one that he has. Ah. All of them, right. and that's the one that counts. Basically, I get the worst. You you take the worst 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 result for yep. you, best result for the fire. So yeah. Okay, at this point, I am going to give it back to you, Ruff. Oh, you oh, you have to wait now until the end of the yep. actual... Yep. Until wow. you activate your third platoon, and then I have to wait. Yep. Now, Ruff, if you were to... If you, you can't, because they've already activated, but those guys that just got shot at, and let's say they hadn't activated or whatever, um, if you were to fire with those units, you would have a minus one to your die roll because of suppression fire. These guys are being suppressed because they're taking incoming fire. Their heads are low. 
Yeah. So the head heads down. I've hit the dirt, and um, yep. So yeah. he's calling back to you for a reaction. There's not a lot I can do. The other lot I just moved into the woods at the bottom. I yep. can't do anything with. Yep. True. But you can activate your third platoon. You could if you wanted to activate it now. Well, no, third, third platoon. That third platoon didn't see any. Oh no, he's got a leader. Hold, hold on, I thought. I, hold on, I thought I could only activate one platoon individually. We have to wait until this he's sequence calling, is over, don't we? He's calling for reaction. So you you activated. You passed it to him mm -hmm. for his reaction. And he's fired. The team player. Now he's passing it back to you. You now become a reacting player. So if you would like to move, so I don't. I'd, sorry, Mark. I don't get it. When you roll the coordination table, if you roll high, you can activate both platoons. In this case, right. eight or ten. But I've, I, I didn't. I, each platoon is activated individually. What's Basically, rough. You pass, and then you can activate. Then you become the activating player again. Right. Okay. Got to get me head around that. So I could. Yeah, what you're going to want to do? You're going to want to pass right now. And then activate your next platoon to do gotcha. Something. So we'll do that and activate platoon um, three. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But I trust me, Ralph. I had the I had I had the same thing in my it, head too when I started playing. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. I, I just yeah. It, 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 it'll it'll click. When it'll it come. Hurts, it'll come. Don't worry. I'm liking it so far. It, you should quite rightly say it's very different. So. Um, yeah, the thing is, the first first platoon and Rolf is stuck in the woods. I can't fire through the woods, can I? One thing I want to tell you, Ruff, is it's hard to it's hard to kill to actually get casualties in this game. That's so, hard. <laughs> a lot of time, there'll, there'll be a lot of disrupting and routing and yeah. grouping. I mean, it's like a real war. There were not a ton of guys getting. I mean, there were, but I mean, and most most of it is done through assaulting. Yeah, that, yeah. It's like it's like Panzer Grenadier. I'm just gonna say it's like Panzer Grenadier. You wear them down. Yeah. So the yeah. game. So each hex is fifty yards. Hmm. You can you can start an assault at two hexes away. One hundred yards. The last hundred yards. You you're running for your, yeah running into it yeah. Okay, so we're going to activate uh, platoon uh, squad one of platoon three with the leader. And we're going to maneuver because I can't fire at anything. I mean, if you want to get. Okay. Yeah. I just want to move here. Okay. And then this one up the top. They're going to move into that house, that building. Bop. And over to you, reaction, Tony. Can, yep. I, ask you a, can I ask you a question, Ruff? Yeah. But don't tell me what you're going to do. I'm going to give you a couple of different scenarios just to kind of talk you through some strategy, okay? Yeah, yeah. So... If you were to just stop, uh, I don't know what your plans are. This is what I do not want you to tell me. Plans? What are you talking about? <laughs> if, if, yeah. If you if your plans are to come down with that group up there in J10, and and maybe end up in these woods down in H9, um, I mean that's not a bad move. What you just did. If you're planning on you know taking this group and running them across to maybe J. I don't know, six or J four. Yeah, yeah. Or, or maybe the the building in H six or behind it. Why wouldn't you just keep on going? Because you need to get there. The less time spent in open ground, the better. Well, I was gonna. Yes, that was a possibility, but I'm thinking when I. Oh. I, I don't. I don't want to know what you're doing. So you give away. Oh, no, no. Moving into a building is the same as moving in clear, isn't it? Yeah, it's one. Ah, right. You see, I'm thinking, thinking different games where moving into a building costs more. It only costs one. Right. So, so I don't, I, 
No, if, I just, I'm, you're if, quite right. I'm yeah. going to run like heck of poos because I need to get across, um, across that open to try and get into that building in J6. I know I'm telling me stuff, but it's we're amongst friends here. No, it's, a, it's a learning game. Yeah. So that's one. Is it two or three I can move? Hey, Richard. Uh, yeah, well, I, I really like this game too. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's, you, if so you do movement points, you can go three hexes. So yep. one, two, three. Yeah, we're going for it. Go. You could definitely do that. Okay. Uh, Nerd says don't do that, but it's a learning game, so we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I want to see, yeah, nerdy. I want to see what happens. Okay, so what I'm going to do, um, and I'm going to react with now everything, because um, <laughs> I need to know where he is. Yeah, maybe nerdy. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and we're still learning. So I did this too, by the way, Ruff. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. I wanted, to, the reason I've done it is similar to what I did. So it's, it's it may be a daft move, but I wanted to see what happens. Sure, Tony, the guys in C seven, do you are they concealed? Uh C seven. They they should be concealed. No, because I fired and the guys in B ten can still see me. But it's within five hexes. Oh, is it five? Well, it's where was it? Um if they maneuver into or fire from an open, oh, not open. Uh, it is three hexes. Ooh, they should. Well, no, because the uh, um, guys and it's three hexes, but the guys I fired at could see me. E nine, so they wouldn't be. They conduct fire from a covered terrain hex in the line of sight within. Yours says three. Oh, C. It's C within two hexes. Oh, that's of an enemy unit. Yeah. Yeah, so you're still you're still concealed. Okay. So that you know, that that one down there is concealed. Yep, I can. I'll. Oh, let's see if I can. Where's the conceal? It's got a C on it. So the one in where? C All the way down at, at the bottom. C seven. C seven. But I'm why is he? Because I saw the gunfire. No. Well, you know, I'm from you. Can, I'm not hidden anymore. I'm just concealed. Because. Right. He, if he if you were within two hexes of him, he would lose his concealment. Gotcha. Okay, so then I'm actually still concealed. This other guy's concealed as well. Yeah, so, so the guy in H six would be concealed yep. right now. But I'm I'm you can see me. I'm just concealed. J six, right? You're gonna shoot with him. Yep. He's within two, so you're gonna lose concealment on J six. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do H6 is going to fire into G9. Hold on. H yeah, John, I'm going to talk to him about that. But if he survives and gets the initiative, he's going to be in great shape. He can I'm do going to, if I survive, to I'm going to do the last 100 yards. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, uh, so first one, um, the H6 attack. Um, no, Dee, is, you, you're, at, you're talking to me like I've been playing this for yonks. This is my first time. Yeah. It's oppression fire, splitting the teams up. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, H6, which is a one firepower. Um, it's an eight range. So at three hexes, it is going to be a minus one. So I'm at a net zero. You're in the woods, so it's a minus one. So you're going to put a minus one in that hex. Right, hold on. Let me try it. Hold on. No, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you know I'm only joking, nerdy. Who are you shooting at? What? Who are you shooting at, Tony? Um, G9. He's my guy's in the woods there. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. G9. And that needs a minus one. I hate not one. having that, that what's circle. Your, what's, your fire, what's your range of firepower? Eight, and it's firepower of one. Why would it be a minus one? For the trees. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking plus one. What's that, shift one? Yes, shift one. Yep. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to go from J6, and we're going to fire on J8. So that is a one, uh, and it's two hexes, so it's a one, and you're an open, so it is a one. Not. What about if I'm moving? Nope. No. Uh, uh, yes. Oh yeah, it's a minus. Is it a minus one or a minus two? 
That'll work. Oh, it's at least a minus five, Tone. <laughs> uh, proximity fire um, within two hexes. Uh, 11 33 C. I believe that's moving within. Nerdy, I think I'm going to play this a lot so I'll learn all the intricacies and nuances because I've got everything. I love it. Yeah, uh, Gareth says first game more of an experience, yeah, experiment of rules and tactics. Yeah, I just want to see what happens. Yeah, because you know, 11 33 C. 11. Uh, yes, he said it's uh, so Nerdwork says yes, it's reaction fire, but is it a one or a two? It's a, it's, a prop, it's, a one. it's a it's a one, it's a one, okay. So that means it is a zero because <laughs> I'm moving as well, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a zero. You wait in a minute. I'll be running the last hundred yards. You wait. Go on. Oh, it's proximity, by the way. There's proximity for reaction fire. Forgot about that. Within that means two hexes. What? So it is a one. Because you're. Oh, no, because no, no, you're no. Okay. no, no, no. You're not doing motion fire up above. Oh, okay. Not up above. It's a proximity. Yeah. It's proximity. Okay. So let, let's go through this again because I'm 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 I got myself lost and confused. Yep. Yep. Okay. So it is a one firepower. Yeah. I'm in eight range at one to two at two hexes. So there's no modifier on that one. And the uh, um and the only other modifier is the proximity fire. So that makes it a two. So uh, it's proximity a two. means you're I'm um, you're close. To me within two hexes gotcha yes right. yeah as a reaction as a reaction because you moved and it's a reaction and that's what that little r is yeah that's what the r stands for is right. reaction fire only yeah now that, that thing above tony for motion fire yeah that applies to vehicles for shoot and scoot and halt and fire actions oh okay cool thank you so it is actually so you're going to right click on one of the units and put a two in there two yeah two <laughs> So don't hit the shift two. You just hit two, the number two. All there right, all right, all right. So. Blimey. Yep, Gareth. Oh, okay, yep. Gareth says only for AFV motion. So yep. So, oh thank right. Thank you guys. No, uh, hey, we got we've got some good people in here between have, Mike and Nerd and Gareth. Yeah, we got. We're gonna we're gonna do good. Yeah. Um, do you still have a? I can't see your stuff the way that you did it. Um, are you? Is there anything else that can... No, that's it. That's all I've got. Okay. So that'll be it for the turn, actually, or for the activation segment. Um, yeah, it goes back to him, and he passes. Yep. Yeah. You got nothing left. Yeah. Okay. So what's next, Ruff, after the activation phase? We've got the firing phase. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Let's... Let's do the single one up yeah, on top. Right, of J8 I first. went rogue. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you should be rogue swordsman, a uh, war gamer. Then, because well, I don't do to be told. Don't, don't get him rogue. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the one on the top because it's a single die roll. It'll be easier that way to get the first one done that way. Watch so what you, are we doing? Watch. Sorry, Tom. Say that again. What are we doing? Uh, we're gonna do fire resolution on the yeah. top. And J8. On the, on the top of the two. Yep. Yep. Oh, that, that's you, Tony. That's your shot. Yep. So I'm going to roll, and I'm going to add two to it. Uh-huh. So six plus two not is eight. eight. That, that doesn't sound good. It's not. <laughs> so your highest guy is seven. So what are we looking at here? Sorry, which table? You're uh, not. If there's no table. No tables. Right, okay. He rolled an eight, a modified eight. Yep. Your highest cohesion unit in that hex is a seven. It is indeed, yes. So eight is above seven. Yep. If you look at your combat tables down there at the uh, small at the bottom, small arms resolution. Right. If the final fire attack result is greater than the cohesion, the, the best non vehicular combat unit in the hex that unit disrupts right or suffers a casualty if it's already disrupted so number seven the seven cohesion guy flips to his disrupted side right 
and all other non-vehicular units in the hex must conduct a cohesion check. Right. So the highest one disrupts. The others have to check. Yeah? Yep. So disrupt is what? Flip. Just flip it, yeah? Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Right. Now you can notice him. His chat, his stats have changed. Yeah, he can't do anything now. <laughs> so here he dropped down one. He he can still close assault. He can he can do a thing called withdrawal. We'll get into that next yep. turn. Okay, but I've got to check cohesion for the other squad, yeah? Yep. yep. So you need to roll a six or lower with the next squad. Right. One die. Here we go. Six. Yes. You're right, man. You're right, nerd. You should have yelled Leroy Jenkins. I should have. If I knew that, if, if I knew who that was. Go go YouTube Leroy Jenkins. It's hilarious. Oh, I have to. I have to because I don't get the refer referral. But okay. Oh, really? Yeah, well, I really don't. Yeah. I'll, I'll YouTube it. I'll YouTube it. I'm playing uh, Diablo or no, no, they're playing World of Warcraft. And they're no, no, whole no. group of guys, and they're going after a big boss, and they're and they're they spend ten minutes talking about strategy. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And the kid, I mean, they're serious about it. And finally, one guy goes, "Leroy Jenkins," and he just runs in, and everybody. <laughs> and so everybody like a, like a do, like a do, like a do. Oh yeah, I'll do that. So, like yeah. a do or die thing, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's me. Really <laughs> That's me. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and do the uh, G9 one. Yeah. Um, now, yep, it's still just it's still just one, so it's yep. one roll minus yep. one. Here so that's go. four minus one is a three. That ain't gonna do it. That's no nothing, way. yeah. So nothing happens there. It's above my below my cohesion, right? Yep. <laughs> and now Tony has two markers. So he's going to roll the four dice, and the far left one will be for the zero, and the next one to the right will be for the minus one. Hold on, hold on. What do you mean? Who's sorry? So if you look up the so the white the first dice. So I'm going to roll so the four d ten. That's what you were asking about earlier. Yeah. So the four d ten. So why are you rolling them now? Well, I'm only ro because I have to roll multiple dice. So this is the best way to do it. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. In, in E9, he has to roll two dice. One die for the zero, one die for the minus one. So the so, last two digits won't matter. Right. Gotcha. So, so I got a two, two and, a, and a five. With, a five. A five. Do I so, blow a raspberry now? And both. Yeah. Are, <laughs> both <below. laughs> Nothing happens there. So, so that's it for fire resolution. Pretty easy, right, Ruff? Yeah, but it could have been a lot worse. Yes, well, yes, but it it wasn't. No. Watch out, Tony! Last yep. hundred yards. Well, now you know. Now you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> um. So now we would do the assaulting resolution phase, which we we don't have anything. We're not doing mortars. So, rough. Since you had the, you were the active player. You need to roll on the time lapse. Hold on, am I the active player? Yes. Can I you not have the initiative? Can I not assault you? Not no. yet. You're done. You guys are past. Well, because I because I've moved. Right. Gotcha. Yep. So I have to do the time you, lapse. You right. really want initiative? Yeah. So I've got to do time lapse first. Yeah. Yep. You did. Mm -hmm. Oh That's my god. That's four, four, minutes. four minutes. So we are up to ten. One, two, three, four, ten. No, nope, right. goes on zero. The minute, yep, there you go. Why is that? Six plus four is ten. Yep. Oh, okay. I see. Yep, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. One, two, three. Was it on six or five? One. Uh, it was on seven. six. We had three minutes. Oh, it was on five. Okay, minutes. sorry. Yeah, me being thick again. Right. <laughs> it's okay. All yeah. right. Math is hard. Math is hard, my teacher. Place your main platoons. Recombine squads. Conceal any units. 
Are any units out of line of sight? No, everybody gets now. To see everybody. So there's no nobody gains concealment. Oh, oh, this guy does not gain. This guy loses concealment. Because uh, I'm within two hexes, yeah? Yep. 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 But uh the other two stay the other ones stay concealed because they're within three hexes. Yeah, they're and... spotted, but why have, oh, I see that yeah. minus one is for the stack, yeah. It's not each, not minus two, yeah. You've got two minus ones there. What are we, what are we talking about? Um, H6. He's got... Oh, yeah, because they're concealed. Right. You've got two units that are concealed. Right. Okay. Yep. It's cumulative. Is that right? Or is it... there, are two, there are two counters there. They're both concealed. Right. Gotcha. And that's not cumulative, but they're done individually. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. I'm getting there. It's all right. <laughs> okay, so initially... Oh, <clears throat> yeah, by the way, by the way, if you haven't done so already, it would help Tony because he needs all the help he can get, especially, yep, when he does stuff with, especially when he does stuff with me, bless him, that if you could push the old smash the like button for him, that would be wonderful. The old smash the like button. Yeah. Ruin your keyboard. Right. <laughs> okay, so, Ruff, we're, we're back to the initiative phase. And but you get the plus two this time because you had it last time, right? That's right. I need it, don't I? And I'm pretty sure you're going to get it. Look at that! Look at that! Oh wait, wait, Ruff! You didn't learn. I'm going to pull a tweeze on you. Oh no! What have you done now? What have I done? If the player, so look at the casualty track again. That that aid, okay? Where? Um, the casualty track that the where the time track is. It has a random event. So actually, you're going to like this because it's a random event. Oh, I love random event. Unmodified. And so it, it's either recon if you roll a one or fate. Oh, if I roll a t an unmodified yeah. 10, yeah. So you roll a 10. So you have to roll on the fate ta table right below that. Right. Here we go. 10. <laughs> Panic. Oh, what? my God. This is going to be good, I bet. As the sole action for this game turn. Oh, wow. This is not good at all. No. For me, you mean? Yeah. Thanks. For you. All units in a single hex selected by the opposing. That's me. Oh, no, that's the opposing you, yes. player in line of sight of the enemy combat unit must withdraw four hexes. Bollocks. <laughs> or to the hex along the friendly, friendly bore edge, whichever is closer. Well, that's interesting because that's kind of an interesting choice for you. Yeah. What do I want to do? Mm. This one's. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Which one do I want to send back four hexes? None or to them. the board edge, one of the two. Um. You know what? Let's send. The hex, let's send hex B10 where your machine gun is. Oh, you rat bag. And put it back to, well, you can't go off the board, so to go back to B13. So you want to go back here, yeah? Yep. Now remember, he does have the initiative. Yeah. Well, the only thing, this is the only thing for this game turn. So, yeah, yeah. so as a sole action for this game, for the game turn. Right. So, so we actually are done with this turn. He's done with those guys. No, with the turn. The whole turn. Th that means because I rolled two natural tens, that's my that's that's gone. Yeah, so you have to roll for the time lapse. At least that's my understanding. Where does it say that? If you read at the bottom under panic. As the sole action for the current game turn. Oh, right. Uh, All units in a uh, single, single. Yep. So this is it. So you'd have to roll on the timetable. And then roll for initiative again. Yep. Then we have to do that again. Yep. Oh, crikey. Here we go. And Gareth says that's correct. So yep. thanks, Gareth. <laughs> <laughs> It's a, it's a random event. You love these, Ruff. I do love random events, but that, that's pretty nasty, that one. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead and roll a single right, die. Here we one. go. I've got one. one. That's good. One. Okay, so two minutes. That's good. So we're coming down 
two minutes. There we go. And so it wasn't horrible damage. No, but I've got to now try and get initiative again. Okay, yep. let me get the end turn button. Okay, yep. So we need to roll. You still get the plus two. Yep, yep. And I'm pretty sure you're going to get it. Oh, you got three, right? Okay. No! Oh, just. Yo, yeah, you got a plus two, so you're at a four. Just. <laughs> yeah, you got it again. Okay, so roll for your coordination. Uh, okay. Eight or better, you get coordination. No, 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 no. Right, so. So let me. Let me give you a little bit of advanced strategy that nerd was talking about. Yeah, yeah. Depending on, let's say you wanted to do this. I don't know that you want to do this, but let's say you wanted to go ahead and assault J6. Oh, just a, just one thing. Hold on. I haven't got a control thing on um, J6. Oh, I'll take care of that. I'll take it. Just listen to, I'll take care of it. Yes, yeah, sorry, because I thought it happened automatically with the other one. Sorry, Mike. Yes, yep. go on. Um, let's say you wanted to take a uh, second squad and run them into uh, H6. H6. Uh, J6, sorry. J6, right, yes. Two hexes, right. So what will happen is you, because you're two hexes away, you cannot immediately go in there. If you were, each, if you were adjacent, you can automatically go in there that hex would be tied up. Yeah, but, 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 but it's called the last hundred yards, Mike. Well, let me finish with what <laughs> I'm Go on, I'm being silly. Go on. Right? So you could jump in there with no problem. Right. And assault. Being two hexes away, you have to go like to J7 and then announce that you're going to assault into there. Right. But you must stay in J7 and put an assault arrow pointing in the direction that you're going to go. Okay. And you must withstand all incoming fire on you. So right. how do you how do you negate that? Right? I was going to say what what happens if I'm standing in J7? Well, nobody's nobody's trying to make me do it. This is what this was what I wanted to do was to just rush forward and try and. Um, so, so we you know J6 is going to shoot at you, and you're pretty sure that H6 is going to shoot at you. Pretty yeah. sure. Not not guaranteed. He may do something different because he's worried about your other guys come running across, right? Yeah. Because yeah. now that you've got guys that can threaten him all over the place, maybe he can't put all of his firepower up there. You don't know what he's going to do. But you can't. If you do third squad, you have a squad down there in G9 that could lay fire into, let's say, J6. And that will put suppression on him, which is another plus, a minus one for his die roll. Right. You can't, it doesn't stop him firing, but it no, makes him less likely to exactly. be successful. So if you suppress the enemy before you go running in, that will be beneficial for you. That's but your then, chance of surviving. But, but then if I do that, that opens up um, H6 to fire on me, doesn't it? Depends because, on how you do it. Yeah. Because I, I can only suppress one hex, yeah? Right. And and who? what was the better hex when he was doing his modifiers up there? Well, he didn't shoot up there. But, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Oh, you did? Yeah, that's why he's just um, do it. It will cancel out the proximity fire from hex J6. Right. But you know that this is one of those cases you would have loved maybe some co cohesion where yeah. you could have done two, you could have two. fired up with these guys down in E9. I could have done everything with my platoons yeah. before I gave reaction to Tony. You could have yeah, a bunch of shooting and then did your moving, right? Now it's getting complicated, Nerdy. I can spit fire, can I? So I can suppress J6 with one. You could. You could split fire. And you're not and you're actually not shooting to get like a great result. You're just trying to put suppressing fire. I'm just trying to get a better or a worse DRM for him. Yeah, we might have to read up on split fire. I can't remember all of the um all of the uh 
pertinent. But then I've only yeah no the, the one in um, G nine I've only got one squad and the other ones are a leader so I can't split those can I? Um, I no, this is one where yeah having the um, three three D. Uh, this is where having the coordination would have been great because you could have fired from. E9. Oh, you can do it. You can split fire with one unit, can you? Yeah. Right, so I can suppress both hexes with that one unit, Nerdy says. Okay, so this is okay. So split fire limited to reaction fire only, right? By infantry units, machine guns, and firepower with the SAV of minus one against two separate hexes containing enemy units that maneuvered. Okay, so you can't... oh, right, so uh, uh, yeah. I'm thinking, okay. All ongoing fire must pass through a single or two adjacent hex sides. Okay. So, yeah, uh, Garrett says it has to be adjoining hexes. This yeah. is quite, yeah. it, it is quite crunchy, this game, isn't it? But, um, yeah, what I was hoping, because Nerdy said reaction fire, I was going to do it. You were going to do something. I would react, split my fire, but I can't do that because they have to be adjacent. Yep. Units, the units have to be adjacent. Yeah, right. No, no worries, no, no. This is all learning for me. This is this is great. Everybody's chipping in. This is brilliant. Now you yeah. know that J six has got a, a really good shot at you. Yeah, you definitely want to probably suppress that one because mm. you're going to be adjacent to him. You're going to move within two. So um, remember, suppression. <laughs> you have to have two um, uh, markers on it to be it suppressed. No. So who's no? Oh, oh, is it for assault? Is it different? Um, because suppressive fire. Yes. Is per two markers. Yes, per two markers. Yeah. So you so have to get two markers who, on there for the suppression. Who would do the suppressing fire? Because I can't do the suppressing. F I can't split. I can suppress though, can't I? From, for instance, from um, G nine. Well, you 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 won't be able to suppress because you don't, you can't activate enough. The only possible way is you would do a rally first down at the bottom. The first thing you do is you're going to try to recover your disrupted unit. And if you were to roll a one, then he will uh, recover and get to take a full action. Oh crikey! Um... Or or. You roll a ten, he becomes a hero. He's he gets his he must charge the closest unit. Hold on, this is this is sounding like twees. All these rules I've never heard of. Ones and tens now, heroes and here. And you get he gets, <laughs> he gets to be he gets to recover, and his his cohesion goes up to eight. Oh. So what you're saying is the the. Unit in J8, I need to rally. You need to yeah. do that first to see what you get. If, you, if you're going to activate the third platoon first, do that guy first and try to recover with Yeah, him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to activate or, the third platoon. Or he can run away. You can have him retreat. You can have him withdraw. And he can withdraw back like, to the building and try to recover back there. Because if, so what, you, if you what fail, you're saying is it's try and rally. And get a 10. And get or, a 10. or a 1. Or a 1. Or, or fall it, back. Or fall back. If you fall, if you don't, if, if you if you try to recover and you don't get to do something with him, and he gets shot and he, he takes another, you know. He, he oh, it's a 1, not the 10. Sorry. Then he takes a casualty reduction. So, Yeah, I think what we'll do. Yeah, because if I if I assault with that good unit, that good squad, it would stop at J seven. You would open fire in J six, yeah. Maybe. And Maybe. in H six. H six is his, is his dilemma. I think. Now I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. But but I can suppress. Need to worry about your third platoon come running across also. 
Because you, if, if he shoots those guys, then you could run, you could run third squad, a third platoon, first squad, and the and the leader right into a building, into H six, as long as he doesn't have something hidden there. Now, because of the back and forth thing going on, right? Right. So I've got to wait and see what he does. So I could assault with the good unit, see what he does, and then if he, then I see maybe I can run across with the first plat uh, the first squad. It's okay. oh gold, right? But your I guess your first real real decision is what are you going to do with your disrupted unit? You you have you you must do a mandatory um, action with him. So the best thing to do, so I can split. Yeah, but I'm going to split the actions. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think what I'll do is pull him back into the building. Now, rough. The other thing to think about yep. is if you if you move second squad up into j7 let's say let's say you do rally up the third squad right and he doesn't yep. get an let's stay there that means somebody else is gonna have to shoot at him i doubt he gets shot at even i if it was me i don't think i would run him back i think i'd just rally him and if you want to shoot at him and waste all your shots there then i'm going to come running across with me. right okay Gareth gave you a good good idea. Regroup third squad. Then G9 fire, then assault. Possibly assault, uh, do the assault with a good unit. So we're rallying the third squad anyway, like you said, Mike and yeah. Gareth were saying, or attempt to. Uh, and then G9 fire at J6. So regrouping is on... Um your play aid so that's rallying yeah yeah it's called regrouping the yeah uh, but yeah right same thing just different okay different words okay that's on it's called Thanks, chaps. it's called recovery and you will uh if your if your modified die roll is equal to or less than your cohesion you recover you rally if the unmodified die roll is a one, uh, if the modified die roll is one or less, you rally. And right. You're okay. a hero if it's if you roll a ten. Un unmodified die roll of ten, you become a hero. If you okay. meet, you get a minus one. If if there's a platoon leader with you, you get a minus one. If you're suppressed, it's a plus one. Japanese is a is a plus one. So basically, I need to roll six or less just to get him flipped again. Yep. Yeah? Yep. But if I roll a one or a ten, different things happen. Yep. Okay. Let's try that. We're going to try and uh, flip uh, the third squad. We need a six or less. Come on, Dice. Don't let me down. Oh, you oh. rockbag. <laughs> <laughs> The best laid plans, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, of the third squad and men, right? Okay, he, he so he's there, he's done. You right click on him and go maneuver, recover, action, yeah. and he's done. So now, what I can now, so you want me to move up this thing and then fire with. G9, yeah. Do you want him to give you your, your, your different um options here? Like like Gareth Perf was saying, you can before you move up there, you can shoot with your third with your first so, squad. <laughs> Shut up, Gareth. <laughs> um, so that would be suppressing fire from G9 first. Well, it won't suppress anything, but if you do survive and you and you get to go in there, if you roll high enough on your attack, you could actually disrupt that unit when you come running in there to a, to assault. If you survive long enough, so do I fire first from G nine or, or, or do you save them to keep pressure on maybe possibly moving them down into the town? 
Because if you fire with him, that means he's probably definitely going to shoot with F6 up there. If you don't fire with him, he's got a decision to make with F6, oh, with H6. Because if he fires, I can fire back, yeah? Yeah, yeah, as long as you don't fire. Well, this you, can fire you can fire at H6 right now if you want. I mean, you're you're the active player. You can, Anybody you can see, you can shoot at. Oh, sure, but I'm just thinking what's best. I'm out in the open. I need to do something with uh, the units, well, the other unit in J8. What do you reckon, chat? Shall I uh, move in for the assault with uh, the the second? Um, I would, assault? Ralph, if you want to see what an assault is, again, this is a learning game. Go yeah. ahead and try it. Let me try yeah. it because yeah. I haven't got a clue what's going to happen now. So yeah. we'll move him first. He's coming in and he stops there, yeah? Yeah, yep. and then right-click on him. And then a right-click and say assault. Uh, flip that. Flip it. Can you flip it? No, I can rotate it or assault arrow. Yeah, yeah. assault arrow. Yep. Ah, now we'll rotate it. Rotate it. Uh, uh, oh, hold on. We'll get there in a second. <laughs> there we go. Right. Oh. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Now, you have a choice to make. You have one more school. You have another guy that you um, at. You have one more in third platoon, right? You got can I bit. just say, can I just say, Leroy Jenkins? <laughs> <laughs> Go for it, man. <laughs> if you, uh, with your other guy in third, you could shoot up there. Hopefully you get lucky, you get a hit. And he he flips and he's, and he's you know just uh... yeah. But if I do that, then the units in H six are free to do whatever they wish. Well, you know they if if you don't do something with if you pass right now, oh, then, he's going to get a full blown shot at me, yeah. And then you he'll pass back to you. And then you could do a reaction with G with G9, but now you're limited to two movement points. So you could get you could get two hexes. You can get adjacent. Or or you could shoot with them. Suppress J6, yes, I think so. That will be firing from G9 to J6. All right, one, two, three, four away. Let's have a look. That's going to be minus one. Minus one. Okay. And then you're going to have a plus one because you're one firepower. So that you're at zero. Yep. And what does the house give him for cover? Two. Is he in a house? Yeah, a wooden building. Yeah, I can't see the train. They never let you see the train under the counter. If there's a button that you can push to like hide all your units. Oh. It is. Where is it? Oh yeah, I'll hide all pieces on this map. Yep. So you get that, everything will disappear. You can see. Oh that. right, I've got you right there back. Okay. That's cool. So what's the house give you for protection? Let's have a look. Uh Probably two. Oh, well, you Okay, here. guys. I just texted my daughter and asked if she knew Leroy Jenkins, and she said, "You know it, don't you?" I've heard it. Yeah, she's heard it. So, so of course. W why? How because because this... rough is Leroy Jenkinsing it in. I'm running. I'm just going yelling at the top of my voice. <laughs> I gotta see this. I gotta see the YouTube oh, gossip. But anyways, yeah. I was just curious if you had heard of it. So I, I, my, my favorite line is right after Leroy Jenkins, the guy that was making those plans goes, Did he really just do that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a minus two for the building. So, so it's a, a wooden building minus two. Yes. Yeah. You, you end up with a minus two counter, Tony. Okay, minus two. You got it. Marker. When you're done, can you go for K or something like that? 
I'm just going to say that. So, okay, minus two is up there. All right, go ahead and activate your unit there. Do I have to? Um, oh, yeah, you got to put a fire marker on yeah. that. Yeah, just, yeah, just realize, yeah, fire, bang. And there. we're done. That's all three. So it is now reaction time for Tony. What do I want to do? Oh, man. I can only do stuff with second platoon because that's the only ones I've seen that's done something. Uh, no. I think C7 would react to those guys. Well, I know. I uh, Yeah, they could because they could see them, but I can only focus on second platoon. Right. You can't, you can't yeah. shoot it. Third, third platoon yet because they haven't shot it. Uh, I mean, second platoon because they haven't shot at you. Yeah. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take um, well, one, I lose cover or conceal. There you go. Now you know what you've got, Ruff. Sorry, missed that because uh, the missus Gainer, Gainer was yakking at me and um, <laughs> the dogs are whining for the and the cat's whining for their treats. So what are we doing? Sorry, Tone. Okay, so in H6, uh, since you moved two hexes away, I've lost concealment. Wow. So you can see what yep. I got. Oh, blimey. Right, okay. And I think what I'm going to do um, is fire at J7. Really? <laughs> with, with what? Uh, with the squad. With with their uh, H6. Sorry. I hate not having that stupid... I know it. H6 is going to show... Yeah, the, the little circly thing, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Who who did this, the... who did this vassal? I don't know. It's very good. Know. Yeah. But Except for the... that. That's like the only Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, circling. so it's a one. Two hexes away for a range of eight. So two hexes, that's a not a not. He you're gonna get puffed in me because you move within two of you. Yeah. Well, I don't yeah. Uh, but then I do get the uh uh, proximity fire, so it'll be a two. Yep. So throw a two on your assaulted unit, dude. Oh, a minus two, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I almost, I almost wanted to correct you there, and then I'm like, oh, don't be stupid, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what are we doing? Uh, okay. Right click marker. Yep. And two. two. Yes. There you go. Now, I can actually fire from J6, can I? Uh, J, J. J6 to J7. You just did that, right? No, that was from H6. Oh, that was H6. Okay. Yep, yep. And he's, you're going to fire from J6 as well, are you? Yep. If I survive this, Tone, you're in for some hurt. You know that, don't you? Yeah, it'll be fun if you survive it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's the same thing. It's going to be another plus two. Yep, so put another two marker on there. Well, now that's interesting. Okay, um, I am passing it back to you, which you basically pass and then activate your second, second platoon. Now, yes, because all um, three, three are done, so it's now two. Oh, now, really oh thanks. Oh, see, I didn't. Yep, I could have. Yep. Mm -hmm. Nerd, you're supposed to be helping me, not him. All right. <laughs> so now, now that he's that he has fired that guy in H six. There, if you wanted to, you could run E nine straight across into like. F6 if you want. Into and that long, building, yeah? It, and long as there's nothing there. Oh, fucky, what's going on? Sorry, the cat and the dog are... Uh, I mean, who, who, knows, who knows the uh, the order of battle can count counters, right, T Tony? Yeah. So he, he can figure out if there's something there or not just by knowing... Yeah, he can figure out what's there. Yep. Which, which means we should just tell him, right? Yeah, I'll just... yeah. Sorry, what? Sorry, missed all that because the cat and the dog were having a chat um, <laughs> with their claws and teeth. A anyway, um, so yes, you're saying I could move into F6. 
because you know you could count all of the counters on the board and you would know the starting so you know that he doesn't have anything else hidden everything that he has there, you, you oh i see because that's a big game in it so well, you, not, would, you would know that because you I'd, would, I'd know that from the scenario exactly. thing. yeah so, so he's you, got you could yeah. freely run up to f6 and you can't do a thing about it because the guy down in c7 will not be able to see f6 but can he do something as i run across the open no, there's no opportunity fire right that I can't get my head around. Yeah, I thought he might have saved F six. I thought he would. I thought he was going to save H six because of their second platoon for that very reason. Because of me running across. Yeah, so, so you got free reign to take F six if you want, and now you're close. And I mean, you're in, you're striking distance of the church even. Yeah. So yeah, I just it is. I just can't get my head around this. Uh, no, no. Um, Opportunity fire. So what we'll do then is move and bop. What I would do. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, that'll do. That sounds good. Because as you say now, I'm in spit distance of the churchy. You use some movement points. One, two, three. So you move right in there. Now you still now you got your guy laying way down at the bottom. So I'm going to have to move him back in the woods. Yep. You can do two axes back to the woods. Oh, this, that's bloody annoying. <laughs> uh, you can't see me, so I'm going to go one, two. And he actually will gain concealment at the end of the turn. He actually should have gained. He should be concealed right now. Who's that? Me. Yeah, that yeah, one. You all those, that, that unit, because I couldn't. There's no line of sight to them. Yeah, they, they, they were hidden last turn. We should have concealed them. Hold on. Where's the concealed mine? It's, it it, it's all the way down on the list. Oh yeah, gotcha. So it's oh, it's a C. Is that right? Yeah. I should do all of them. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Uh, it shows you a C, but it shows me uh, the back, uh, like a, just a German counter. Concealment counter. No, you uh, did the wrong one. Just highlight them all and hit the conceal. I did that, but it, it's not letting me do that anyway. Um, highlight them all. Highlight them all, and let's try it now. Bang. There you go. Ah, good old. Right. <laughs> well, you know me and Vassal, love hate thing. Okay. Well, that's you're getting it. better at it, though, Ruff. Well, I know, but it also gives me the opportunity to play and chat with all you know, all, all the peeps. It's wonderful. That's that's the bit I love. <laughs> well, your C seven can do something because he saw him run across. Yep, he's going to activate. He's going to maneuver. Who is? Uh, my C seven. Down the bottom there. Yep. Yep. Okay. He's just going to go this way. I can only go one hex anyway, so. Okay. C7's headed that way. That's it. That's it. So we have, um, now I haven't done the um, 100 yards rush, so we do uh, the fire resolution first, though. Yep, yeah, that's we, all the fire Let's go ahead and do that. Right. So, Ruff, go ahead, and I'm going to let you fire on me first. Well, do the do the thing first. Up, up the top there, the J7. Yep, J6. Yeah, do J6. So you're going to fire uh, minus two to your die roll. Right. Come on. Die roll. Six. That's a four. That's not good enough. Oh, you were close. Yeah, you were. Because that was a five. five. Yeah. Yep. Oh. That minus two did it. Okay. Yeah. So now I am going to roll two dice, and they both have twos. So whichever one's worse for you. Two and a five plus two one's a seven. Ooh. Yep, it's a six. Yep. So now he's disrupted. Oh bum. Gara says there's been some good examples of play this turn. Yes, I agree. Yep. It, it, it's me trying things out and getting... well, just the options that are out there and everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, yeah it may not um, be the best, the best tactical things, but I want to just see what happens. And we got to learn to by doing. You yeah, know, and you learn by your mistakes, as you know. So mm -hmm. yeah. I it's believe, good. if I'm not mistaken, these guys that have been playing more can probably correct us. But during the assault phase now, I believe he can continue to go in there and do an assault, even though he's disrupted. I remember but, you saying that, Mike. But you would be at a great disadvantage. And so at this point, I believe you could call it faint, where you will not go in there. You you have to. Oh no, nobody says I still have to do it because I said I but was. But you can do, do the. It. But you can do a faint. That's what Mike was saying. There's a, it's called a faint. Yes, you. So, you could you could faint at this point. In other words, you're, you're just going to stay where you are, out in the open, disrupted. Hold on, we got yeps and nose here from nerve nerve saying, nerve saying no, so we better look that up. Uh, let's see. Where's the assault? Uh, assault resolution. Nope. A faint. A faint allows. Oh, he had to do that before the fire resolution, right? So, a faint allows a player to call off an assault during step B of the marker adjustment segment of a platoon activation. Well, yeah. Well, let's. Do you want to just run with it? We can just run with it, rough and see what happens. Learning experience, because we've got a yeah, sure. Because you're uh, the rules. You know, you know, nerdy knows, and Gareth and other peeps know. I know nothing. I'm being just. I'm a blank, blank page that's been taught this game. Yep. So you know. So. So yep. when I read the rules now, I'm at home. Uh, it all makes sense. So we go. Oh yeah, remember that? Yeah. Rock yep. Yeah. Okay. So move the, your unit into my hex. Mm -hmm. On top, uh, nurse saying that happens before the yeah, yeah. that would yeah. happen before because part of the activation marker adjustment. You mean the the faint? Yeah. So before we did the the result of the fire after you saw the fire coming in. Oh yeah, I believe you could have called it off there instead of faint. Yep, but I wouldn't have known that because well, yeah, that's yeah. You yep. would know, you would know how much. Fires coming in on you, you would do it before you resolve. Because I got, I'd, I'd have gone. Look, I got a plus two here. It's all dodgy. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're like, I got two plus twos, not just one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's go through the assault because I think uh, yeah. it's a learning, and then this will probably yeah. end the turn. We'll end the turn here. So So I move on top of you. Yes. So get, rid of fire, get rid of the fire marker. Um, yeah, get rid of fire markers. We don't need them. Go. Got uh, it. Okay, Ruff. We're going to go over to the assault resolution. The active player determines the order in which assaults are resolved. Yeah. We only have one assault. So. We only have one, so I imagine you're probably going to pick that one. Right, sorry. Yes. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to. Um... Sorry about the dog barking. There's somebody oh, at the door this I've time. I heard was squealing earlier, so it's not a yeah. big deal. <clears throat> the assaulted player, you're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to roll a one, a 10 sided die on this assault resolution table. And we're going to have some modifiers to that die roll. And then we're going to read the result. Okay. So the first thing we're going to look up is cohesion differential. Oh, blimey. What is your cohesion of your unit compared to his unit? Now, is More. that okay? Is that cohesion or is that the assault factors? No, that is cohesion differential. Okay. Right? My, my. Right. Cohesion. Assaulting, regrouping, defender, neutral. One, defender, development, defender, participating. So oh, yes, on. I see it, yeah. Hey, hang on just a second. Let's make sure we're doing it right. So I'll drink the beer. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> 14.2A. <clears throat> Okay, provide both forces, contain at least one pound. 
So the cohesion differential is your is yeah, my, that is a my cohesion minus your cohesion, yeah? Yep. Mm -hmm. That's how I think of it. Yeah. So that's a plus one because you have a higher cohesion yep. than I do. So that's good. But Assaulting the, 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 the assault number come into this. That's what I that's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh so the next one would be assaulting so, a regrouping force, which it is not. Defender is in a rural building, IP or behind a wall. My I'm not in a rural building, I'm in a wooden building. Well it says a wooden it says defender in a rural stone or wooden building hex. Yeah, you are you are in a rural wooden building. Okay, so that's a one. So that cancels that out then, doesn't it? Yeah. No, that's... Yeah, that's why I'm like... So my differential is one. Each player determines a total result value of their forces by totaling the assault values of the units participating in the assault. So you're both gonna you're both gonna do your your um each right, player get yeah. the assault value modified table and applies all applicable results to determine the net assault value for their force. The final die roll is determined by subtracting the defender's net value from the uh attackers. Right, my my attack value, my my value is one, isn't it? Because I've got a, a cohesion differential of one. And and you and are, now you have to work. None of those others apply to me, I don't think. So you now I'll work out yours. Number, yeah? You also have one for your blue number. You have a one uh, plus one for your cohesion. Your assault value is two. Two. Right. Okay. Now you work yours out. We take one away from the other. Yeah. And Tony's got two plus mm -hmm. one for the building. Yep, because I'm in a rural building. Yep. And, my, and minus one for cohesion differential. Okay, so I would have a three, then back to a two. So you're both, it's even. Okay. Right? Well, nobody's saying minus one for me, but. Tony has three, Ruff has two. So he has one. He has one for cohesion. Yep. He's got yep. one force firepower. Two, and that's all I see for for rough. Uh, oh, that's for, correct. I have two. Yes. Yep. Tony has two, three minus one for two. Yeah, because he's only got. Um, yeah, he loses yeah, minus yeah, one for his cohesion. No, we're missing something. He's isn't Tony's cohesion differential minus one. Yeah, he's a five and you're a six. So he's minus one. Do you take both both of them, yeah? Disrupted or anything? No, I'm not disrupted. There's no dis there's nothing for disruption. So it should be a two because of the cohesion. So I'm a two. Thanks, plus David. One for the building. Tony had a two and one for the building, but my cohesion is a minus one. So that brings you back down to two. My cohesion differential. He's saying you yeah. had three. Tony what about cohesion two, differential? The yeah, there's cohesion differential. What about the cohesion differential? Yeah, yeah. It's it's even. It's two, two. All right, David. I'm being mullered here, but it's great fun. I, I have two, two. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, oh, no, oh, oh. it doesn't apply. If applicable, the difference is applied to a positive AVM to the force with the ah, better cohesion. So just, I don't get the cohesion. Though, no, the, no, he's, the nerd, he's just said it. I think the one that has the best, that's the one that takes it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Ah, got it, it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Got yeah. So it is, I have a three, you have a two, so it is a net one overall. It's a right. net minus one. Minus one, yes, thank you. Net minus one. You mean a minus one for me? Yeah. You're going to roll a 10-sided die and minus one from it. So I need a high, yeah? You want high. Thanks, Nerdy. Yeah. We, got, oh. we got there in the end, matey. We got there. <laughs> we need a... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this game is hard, Nerd. Here we go. Come on. Positive thinks. Six minus one is five. Okay, five. so two to five. 
Two to five. So we'll read this together. Oh, let me pull this up. I don't know where why is it? I don't where is it? it where is it? Uh, assault. Here we go. Two to five. So number one's not going to apply. Yep. Because it's number not two is not going to apply. Number three, attacking and defending riders, not going to apply. Number four is going to apply. Attacker retreats. Retreating, non vehicle unit conducts a cohesion check. And it's two hexes, right, for the retreat? Two, uh, two, to, uh, two to four. Two to four. Two to four. Yeah, two to four. Um, so, okay. Ruff, you got to do a cohesion check. So, sorry, yeah, I've just found the blooming table. Which one are we on? Two to five. Two to five. So, it's not an urban assault. Not no, the five. first three don't account. Oh, actually, four, isn't it? So, yes, yep. I get you. Attacker retreats, retreating non vehicular units. You know, the, the cohesion check. Do I? Oh, you retreat first, nerd says. So go ahead and yeah, retreat first. Say, retreat. How many do we retreat? Two to four. Two to four hexes. That's up to me, yeah? Yep. yep. Basically, you can send them back to the building. Let me try and... Uh... If you want. I think so. Get rid of that assault. Now you have to make a cohesion check. And if oh, you man. if you fail it, you're gonna be you're gonna lose a cat. You have a casualty point. Oh, six or less. Come on, this um, I hate these dice. I tell you. Look you at know. that. See. Look okay, at number five. Check for leader or FT loss and mm -hmm. promotion points. We don't have any of that. None of that. That's it. Mark undisrupted attacking or defending oh. non-vehicle. For regrouping. It's for regrouping. Mark them as regrouping. So go ahead and mark your group guys as regrouping. In the house, yeah. Yep. And that was just, yeah, that was just him, right? You're not regrouping, Tony. No, it says attacking and defending. Mark okay. undisputed attacking slash defending non vehicles. So I have to do regrouping. Yeah, both well. regrouping. It says Sorry. attacking Mark undisrupt. Oh, undisrupted. I'm oh, undisrupted. Not, Ruff, not, you're not me. No, he says not me. Yeah, no, because you're disrupted. disrupted. Got to read well, the whole thing. <laughs> read all the words slowly and carefully. Yep, I am regrouping because I'm not disrupted. You're disrupted, so you're re not regrouping. Okay, you're, you're already in a state of. <laughs> I'm already in a state. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so assault is now done. So that was the first assault. What did you think, Ruff? Not too bad. Once Not we too got... bad. I've given you a little sting. You've got to regroup. And I'd already disrupted you anyway, so. Yeah, so I, I just had to move back. My only yep. problem is now this poor um, disrupted unit in J8 is. Um... Yeah, but, yeah, you got two guys that need to, uh, need to regroup. I think we have to pull back and regroup and see what we can do. Yep. Okay, uh, no mortar. So rough. Roll on the um, uh, uh, time ta time, time lapse. lapse. Time yep. lapse. Right here we go. Uh... <laughs> five minutes, which oh. makes sense. We did an assault, so five minutes. You know, a little bit more action, so that makes One, sense. Two, three, four. Yeah, it's all very, it's all very narrative. That's good. Yep. Oh yeah, this game definitely has that narrative to it. Oh, and crikey, yeah. then we will hit the end turn button. And we are done. We are ready to start turn 17. We're 17 minutes in. So I'm going to go ahead and file this. And we are because we're two and a half, two hours and 15 minutes in. So nice. it goes so quick. Yeah. Well, this, I mean, we got in quite a few turns. So I know, I know nerd. Now I roll high when I need to. Go figure. <laughs> Rough. But 17 yeah. minutes. Well, did you enjoy that, Ruff? No, I hated it. Okay. <laughs> no, actually, it's so different. It, it is. It's just, uh, it's brilliant. That, you know, fighting formations I thoroughly enjoyed because it was so different. This is just bonkers. One of the things that Mike Denson, the designer, says that 
his goal with the design of this game is to try to recreate unit behavior. Yeah. And when you kind of think of it in those terms, it it it, it, it does it does in some ways, and it, I am biased because I love the game. It does in some ways remind me of Panzer Grenadier, in some ways. The, uh, the maneuvering and, and the yeah, you're not gonna... away, the chipping away and all that sort of thing. You Try know. to get them disrupted before you assault them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but it's different <laughs> yeah well i'm going to tell you we won't be um doing next friday because i am at scout camp next week so you're a bit old, you're a bit old for scouts aren't you i my sean's going to scout camp i'm going there for half a week as a leader so, <laughs> okay. so yeah i am a bit old for a scout i was a scout yeah when i was younger so yeah is, uh, sorry i've got a mental image of you in shorts now stop it what what's a scout what's a scout isn't that the scout way what what's a scout always a scout yeah kind of yeah because you yeah you just you just yeah you just can't do the stuff you used to be able to do <laughs> no you can't climb trees or run anymore that's <laughs> i was an indian guides when i was a kid i was like okay other, i like yep. the, i like the other side yeah yeah. So, um, but I just want to uh, say you... thank you. I just want to say thank you to and Nerdy and everybody else that you know chipped in. Thank you for you know helping out. That was brilliant. Yeah, I'm looking forward to continuing this, and um, uh, me and Mike got to finish our game too because I'm on the other side on that one, and that one's coming down. I might be able to get that. I'm 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 working my way around, kind of like what Rough you were doing. I kind of did the same thing. I'm just working my way around. So, um, but I've, see, I've got got the whole lot i can't wait to you know and the expansion you know the, did the you, uh, did, tony did you run by rough our conversation about no i did not let's 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 throw it at him right now now let's, what let's do it um a four person so me mike you and jester doing a um uh co-op mr president Bloody hell! Let me get the game first. Well, when it when it comes out, we were we're, talking later. Yeah, we're going to get it within a week or two. I hope so. Looking forward to it. Yeah. Um, Rough, you would be the president, right? And we're and we're your loving staff. And you're my aides, are you? We are. We're the ones in your ear telling that you're a horrible president. What worm tongue? All that sort of (laughs) thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, Yep. Sounds brilliant. Yeah, Again. I think it'll be fun. I want to test it out because I want to use the game for uh, my government class, and this will be a great test run uh, for. You just uh, want to use it to get your masters, don't you? That's what you want to do. I know I sussed you out, mate. Yeah. <laughs> but so, no, yeah. But no, I think it'd be fun, and I, I agreed with Mike. I thought it was a good idea, and uh, I know Jester would jump in on it too because he. Yeah, I've, already, I've already mentioned it to him. He was all for it. He wanted yep. me to run it by you guys. Yep. Yeah, oh, we're good to go on that one for sure, for sure. So we'll use. We could use anything. We can use the tabletop simulator, or we could use Vassal because there's a new Vassal module. We'll use, we'll use Vassal. It's really good. Okay. Cool. Also, it doesn't suck up like. Tabletop simulator is a beast oh, on my computer. Yeah, that just uses everything, doesn't it? You have trouble yep. with that. Now, do I have to really know the game, or am I nope. just, a, a, just nope. a figure, am I just a figurehead like the Queen, and you tell me how to play? It? Rough, no, you, we'll we'll tell you what. We'll advise you. Rough, you have your advisors. That's what they're there for. Yeah, yeah. But what what happens if there's like a, a dodgy advisor, dodgy A that has different? It may happen. We may have a scandal on one of us. You know, it happens. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing is, remember, if anything goes wrong, it's your fault. You're the president. And it stops here, doesn't it? The buck. Yep. <laughs> Sounds great. Sounds great. But, yeah, really appreciate it. And, a- I, I, and I'll you. tell you, uh, just looking at my statistics, everybody's getting excited. I'm getting more people watching our playthrough, Mike. Yeah. Uh, you see the, ta- um, what is it, tactical, what is it called? Um, legendary tactics. Yeah. Is, has a whole series out right now. They're they are deep in it. <laughs> what into what? G, GMT sent them advanced copies of the game. Yeah. 
Oh, what, to Mr. President, yeah? Yeah. Doing... Yeah, everybody's going to be watching everything on YouTube oh, because it's... they know they're going to, it's going to turn up very soon. So it's, uh... it's going to be one of those happiest and worst days of my life coming up real soon. <laughs> So, well, fun. Mike, thanks. I'm going to have to go get kids dinner and myself dinner, but um, thanks. I appreciate you jumping in. And uh, when we start back up, maybe on, I think June 30th is the next Friday, we'll, uh, we'll have you back in and maybe yeah. rough, we can finish this up next, that Thursday, that 30th. And you can read the rules now. And I, I agree with you on that. After you play, a lot of times it's easier to read the rules and you catch up. You yeah, catch the, up. the rules will make sense to you. Because, yeah. yeah, I now know what, what, the things talking about, you know, whereas before it's all sort of blah, 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 isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean, David. Yeah. <laughs> Get out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So we got tomorrow. We've got uh, yes. the War Room. War Room's on my channel tomorrow. Uh, we're going to have the recently married Tweez. Uh, Tweezer's going to be on tomorrow. With us. On, yeah. Yep. Have we got, so. have we got a, a, sub, a, a title, a subject, or I, I like to wing it with you and Tweez because we never know what we're going to get into. But, you know. I have How many more tactical games do we need, you know? I have over under for recipes at an hour and seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. Anything can happen, especially with me and Tweez, because we're bonkers. And I'm taking the under. <laughs> Oh, yes, I, I, I'm going to stop them before they can get done with recipe before we start. I'll be like, as soon as somebody says a food, I'm like, nope. I'll, I'll just start <laughs> doing uh, insulated growlers. No beans and chili. Yeah, no growler mentions. Yeah, no, no, none of that nonsense. <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 it'll be fun. And I'm I'm pleased everybody enjoyed me muddling through and you guys, you know, helped me out. That was that was good fun. Oh, oh Ra, uh, nerd says, and the shorts don't fit. Like not, not only am oh, I gonna not, come on, no, not too much. No, it's no, in my head. Not anymore. And of course, Nerd will ask about food tomorrow. Yep. And Gareth says plenty of good eating and food tips, cooking tips. <laughs> so well, yeah. So we'll be on my show. We'll be on my channel four to six tomorrow. Um and uh nine yeah. to eleven proper time. Yep, the normal time. Um, as Twee says, what is a normal show? Yeah, um, that's right. We I don't have that, yeah. a really a, our normal is abnormal. So you know, somebody, maybe it is normal. Somebody else's show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, thanks a lot, guys, and we'll see you guys next time. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for jumping in, and we'll talk to you later. See you thanks, guys. Everyone. Mwah.